against us. Uh, in the preface of this book, I sort of set the tone for it, uh, I do set the tone for it, through an observation of John Henry Newman, which has been very healing uh, for me. Uh, it's from <coughs> his sermon on the mental sufferings of our Lord. And I, John Henry Newman is meditating on how um, in Mark chapter 15, uh, we're told that when Jesus was suffering on the cross, uh, the soldiers uh, offered him wine drugged with myrrh, uh, but he didn't take it. Why did Jesus refuse that drugged wine? Well, according to Newman, Newman says that Jesus didn't wish to limit his sufferings to the pain of the present moment. In other words, Jesus made a conscious choice to experience the pain of memory. And uh, what uh, Newman means by this is that uh, human beings experience pain primarily through the same mental faculty through which we remember. For animals, uh, animal pain is simply in the present moment. That doesn't mean that animal pain is is bad. I, I isn't bad. I mean, that doesn't mean it's that that we shouldn't you know try to prevent animal pain. But it does mean that animal pain isn't as bad as ours. Because if you think about it, you know, as bad as the pain from a needle comes or the pain from banging your, I don't know if you call it the funny bone here, your funny bone, uh, as painful as that is, if it just lasts for a moment, we can take it. We can take any kind of pain if it just lasts for a second, a split second, and it's gone. Uh, but what Newman points out is that, in fact, when we're receiving a shot or any kind of doctor's procedure, our pain doesn't begin with the shot. Our pain begins with seeing the doctor's hand coming up to us, thinking about the pain that we're going to receive, then beginning to feel the pain of the procedure, then wondering how long the procedure is going to be, and, 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 and then even after it's over, we have the, the memory of it. That's different from animal pain. That's the kind of pain that only humans are capable of. Jesus came as man to, uh, to suffer and experience all the, the, the pains that had been caused by sin, and even just, um, just you know, simple physical pain that isn't explicitly caused by, by my sinning is still caused by the first sin that, that, that made a crack in the fabric of the world and separated uh, human beings from God in order to, <coughs> to reunite us uh, to reconcile us with God, Jesus had to take on all his sufferings, so including the pain of memory. And uh, what I like about uh, Newman's insight about this is that it does more than help us understand who Jesus was. Uh, it helps us understand who he is. Um, we already know from the witness of the gospel that Jesus, having written, ha sorry, having risen, retains the physical wounds he suffered upon the cross. Uh, we see that in the Divine Mercy uh, image with the light streaming from the wound in Jesus' heart. Um, so what Newman's doing is he's following this to its logical implication. Jesus must then also retain his invisible wounds, the memories of each moment of his sufferings. Now, you might ask then, how can Jesus retain his, his memories of pain, given that there are no tears in heaven? Well, the answer, I believe, is that just as in the resurrection, Jesus' visible wounds are now transfigured, radiating grace. Mm -hmm. We hear this in John 1.14, came full of grace and truth. Um, so too... Jesus' invisible wounds are now likewise glorified. All Jesus' sufferings remain etched in his memory, but his memories of them no longer bring him feelings of pain. In his risen state, when he remembers his passion, he remembers only his passion, the 
overpowering love that he bore that led him to shed every last drop of his precious blood for our salvation. So the question that I ask in this book is, it's, it's a rhetorical question. I, I think you, we would all answer yes to this. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have the mind of Christ, to be able to look back at, at our entire life, both the joys and the sufferings, and to see only the love of God? Well, that's the question that I seek to answer here. 